everyone, this is a two girls one let's play a quick look of uh, the Stanley Par Par Parable. And uh, I'm Mari, and this is Stacy. And Stacy's gonna be making all the decisions. Great. Begin the game. So if it sucks, it's my fault. It is. Just be interesting, goddammit. Oh my god, I will try. Just make cool, just any decision is Stop, like a, stop. <laughs> too much pressure. Too much pressure. <laughs> This is the story of a man named Stanley. You're Stanley. Stanley you're worked man. for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh, that employee sucks. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Wow, that sounds This is awful. what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, so Stanley windy. relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. So, you're a man who... Do I whip out my dick and pee on the floor? Can you? I don't know, is there, is there a command for that? Maybe no. we just have to unlock an achievement to do that. <laughs> um... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Do you want to do that? Can we, we can't open any doors, right? Uh, no. Okay. Just. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace <laughs> of his co-workers. So I guess let's just, just walk down this hallway. Is there anything? Uh, I mean, can we look at anything on the way, or...? Okay. This place when Stanley creepy. came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So we're gonna go to the right. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few <laughs> moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. All right, what's down but here? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible <laughs> he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> So Stacy, yeah, let's take a look at all the different things you can see. What do you want to do? What is that an elevator over there? Over there? No, that. What's that platform for? If you get on it, it'll start moving. Let's do it. Do you want to go Oops, over there, I think or do you want to like even rebel the against the elevator? I'm hey, sure can we can jump off? Really, yes, we can. I realize that investing your trust in someone do we else is difficult. Do that? But the fact if is, we go that over the here, we'll die. It's been about nothing but, but you all this time. Make a decision this right now. Go. Stanley. Someone you've forgotten? What? Really? I was in the middle of something. <laughs> do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? What? Yes. I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. No, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. No. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. 
Stanley walked through the red door. Let's go through, let's go through the red door. Okay. Or do we want to rebel the whole time? <laughs> oh, this is all God, you. You are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have Only for a moment, to be though. happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right corridor. now. Oh, no. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just, I wanted to are stop. We just, are we stuck? I would, we would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Let's go through this one. This one? Yeah. Just because. Just because. Now we're in the- Now you know how I felt when I kept doing the opposite. You were like, Mari, just do what he says. No! I won't! I didn't say to do what he says. No, remember when you were watching me? Oh, yeah. What are we looking for? Hmm? Space? This doesn't seem right. Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. I've never seen this. If we just stay I'm right a genius. here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel. What's down the stairs? I actually. True happiness. Feel What's down here? Happy. <laughs> no. Wait. Where are you going? Off into the never. What is this? Can I go back? Sooner or later, we have to go somewhere. We could just stay here forever. <laughs> this would be the most boring quick look ever. <laughs> oh no, stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Where, why are we going to die on a pair of, on a set of stairs? I don't know. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Oh. I think this is the only way out, Stacy. What? We you mean we can't turn around? Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. What happens so what happens if we jump off then? We die. But and then, then it restarts and we can have a whole new set of choices to do. Okay. Wanna go? Yeah. Let's... No! Whee! Oh. Oh. Thank God you lived. You had me worried <laughs> there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? Let's try again. <laughs> he told me to go oh, back. No. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? We. Ah! Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that? My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? Yes. You're literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being <laughs> happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. I mean, we can't just keep throwing ourselves off the stairs. Sooner or later, something has to happen, right? Right, I think so. Maybe. Is it over? Yes! It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. So how many times did we throw ourselves off the stairs? It's like, I like think four three, times. Four times. Three or four times. Okay, now let's make some decisions, Stacy. I had never seen that one before. All these co-workers were. Wait, no, this isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? Why wouldn't it be? What's different? I don't know. I saw a completely different one the last time I jumped onto that rail, because you chose a different thing. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, let's go to the left. Yeah, 
I hear doors opening and closing. This game is kind of creepy to me. <laughs> the doors close Yet behind you. there was you. not a single oh. person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping Tips he for might not getting find fired. an answer there. Let it fall up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Oops. You want to go in there? Yeah. There's nothing in here. Though. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Now we're stuck in here. Do you want to go out and get back on track, or do you want to stay in here? What there was it? nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom <laughs> closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it For is, some reason... he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the narrator in this game really annoys me. That's are you, why... Are you really still in the broom closet? That's why I always try Standing to do the opposite of nothing. whatever he tells me. Oh, I'm just like, no, I don't, offer me I don't some want explanation to. Here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Up or down? Coming to a staircase, uh, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, damn it. Let's go down. <laughs> yeah, now you understand. Like, I don't want to do anything he says. Sweet. But Car? Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of yeah. my co-workers blinking mysteriously oh, out no. of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, like he began to make other strange observations. Until it talks? For example, until it finishes talking? why couldn't he see his feet when Just he looked listen. down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Right, he thought okay. to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming what? about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. Oh my god, I'm having an existential crisis off, in a game. I wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Oh my god. Now hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain beyond a doubt that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... Uh. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. 
So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. No! Oh, man. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Are we having a panic attack? Yeah. And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled <laughs> through time talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed <laughs> oh my God. the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. Okay. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. That's and then really she strange. And ran. <laughs> that was a two girls in one quick look All right. of the Stanley parable. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Stacy's like sitting here with her mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of that game. It was too sad. No, it's just I don't know. Too weird. I don't find it entertaining. I I like I hate the narrator. He just talks so much. It's like blah 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 blah, and you just have to. But wander. it feels so good to just not do what he says. <laughs> You just, like, walk around in circles until he stops talking. <laughs>